Okay, this is an opportunity for us to do a titration um, using a platelet product. It's a group O platelet. We need to know what the titer of anti-A and anti-B because we actually want to transfuse this unit to someone who is group A or group B. And if it, the titer is too high, we can't do that. Um, if you remember about the ABO system, um, the, um, there's some group O people that have high titers and those people we would not want to transfuse to a non-O person. So you label your tubes. It's very important with both the name um, of the product, the number of the product, and also um, what tube number it is that corresponds to your dilution. Tubes 2 through 12, you're going to pipette 200 microliters or 0.2 mLs of saline in each of those tubes. You're then going to pipette 0.2 mLs or 200 microliters of the sample into tubes 1, which is the NEAT, it's the original uh, concentration of antibody, and then you're going to put 200 microliters of the platelet plasma into the tube 2. You're then going to take, mix this tube well, and then you're going to take 200 microliters from this tube into the third tube, mix well, and you could use the same pipette tip, but then mix well and then pipette 200 into 3, from, four, from 3 to 4, from 4 to 5, and so far. And when you get to number 12, you'll have 400 microliters into this tube where we just want to have 200 microliters. And so you're going to take 200 microliters into tube 13 in case you need to further your titration because they're exactly the same um, uh, titration level, dilution level. So once you have that all done, you're then going to um, need to find cells that correspond to the antibody that you're interested in measuring. And so you want to use, for a titration, you always want to use a homozygous cell. So our reverse typing re reagents, our A1 cells, will be what you would put a drop into each of the tubes. and then when you have your labeled set for your bees, then you would, and of course, the same thing with the, the dilutions, and then you add your cells, and then you spin, and then you're gonna read and record. So, one uh, thing to remember is you want to record from the, the, the highest dilution backwards to the lowest dilution. It's just easier to go from a negative reaction to agglutination. It's just something about psychology of your mind's eye. It's just easier to grade. And once you, uh, so you're going to record all your reactions and the last reaction that gives you a, a one is the actual titer. And for a playlet, it, it does depend on the facility, but it's um, uh, a titer of less than 1 to 25 is often used. If it's less than that, then you could transfuse it to a non-group O. If it's higher, then we can only be group specific. Okay, so I'll let you go ahead and pipette. So she's, right now she's taken saline and she's taken it into a, a container that's easy for her to use and she's taking 200 microliters, putting it into tube 2. going to go ahead and use a new tip to get her sample. And 
she's going to put 200 microliters into the first tube, which is neat, which means there's no dilution to it. And then she's going to put 200 microliters into the second tube. She's going to mix it well. Put it into tube three. So now she has a one to four dilution. So good pipetting is important. And again, we do serial dilutions in microbiology and in chemistry. So it's a handy skill to, to master. Now from the 11th tube, we're now putting 200 microliters into the 12th and final tube for this set. She mixes it well. And then that tube has twice as much as the other tube, so we want to be sure we take 200 microliters, put it in tube number 13 in case we need to do further dilutions. So we're going to go ahead and test for anti-A, so we're going to challenge it with homozygous A1 cells. So she's going to put a drop into each of those tubes. And then once she's done that, she's going to keep them in order. So she's going to put it into the immunofuge, putting number one in slot number one and slot two, for number two, and so on. And she's going to spin it for 15 seconds. So you just have to be patient and, and continue on reading each tube until you have agglutination and, and have graded all of your tubes. As you're almost ready to read, you have a red background and little bitty chunks that have definitely stayed, eh? Yeah. That's definitely a one. Yeah, these, these ones are really easy to, to do, cause, and that's why the recommendation is to go from tube 12 with a lower amount of antibody in there to a higher concentration with more antibodies because agglutination is a lot easier to see. Yep. And this would have been the normal neat what you would normally see when you do your back typing. And that's a nice easy <laughs> floor. Excellent. So if we take a look at your interpretation, tube 5 is where you have 1 and so you would report your dilution as 16. And if the clinical cutoff was 25, then your this particular platelet plasma um, could be transfused to someone that was group A or group AB in this situation. And you just repeat the same, same thing with a new set of tubes. 
redo the dilution. And then, and since we're asking the question about anti B, you just use your your B cells instead. So a little tedious, but patience and good technique, and that you can get some meaningful um, information about whether to tr transfuse um, a platelet unit or not to a non-group uh, specific patient.